Oh man, brain's not working today. Oh hey there, even if your brain is also not working, give me just 10 minutes and I'll explain to you how to derive the equations for voltage across and current through a charging capacitor. All right, here's our capacitor circuit, well, RC circuit, because it's got a resistor and capacitor in it. And what we're gonna do is derive the equations that relate the voltage across and the current through all of the components in the device. So what we have in the circuit here is we have a source voltage, we have a resistor with a value R, and the voltage across the resistor is VR. We have a capacitor with a value C, and the voltage across it is VC. And then through the components is there, since they're all in series, it will be the same current, we have the value of IC. You'll notice that the current and these two voltages are lowercase, and that's just to denote that these are going to be values that change over time. So when that switch is closed, in general terms, what's going to happen is current will start to flow, charge will build up on the capacitor, voltage will build up on the capacitor, voltage across the resistor will drop because these two voltages have to add up to Vs, and then eventually when the capacitor is full, it will be at the maximum voltage, which is Vs, and the current will stop completely. So to do this derivation, let's start with what we know about the circuit. We know from Kirchhoff's voltage law that Vs will be equal to VR plus VC. We also know that VR will be the current through it times its resistance. But we also know that since IR is equal to IC, this value of IR will be equal to capacitance times the rate of change of the voltage over time. So that means that Kirchhoff's voltage law equation could be rewritten as VS is equal to C dV C dT, so there's the current part of the equation, times R plus VC. I'll rewrite this in the kind of a more standard format. So what we're trying to do is figure out an equation for VC for this. And this is a first order differential equation. So we're gonna to have to use some calculus to figure out an equation for VC. And let's start by rewriting this equation with dVc dt on one side of the expression. Now let's split these terms in that differential part of the expression and, and put the Vc with the dVc and then the Rc with dt. Now the next step is to integrate both sides of this equation. And we're assuming that the instant the switch closes, the voltage across the capacitor starts at zero and is going to charge up towards some value. So we're going to integrate this expression from zero up to some arbitrary value Vc. And similarly, since the, the switch closes at time zero, we're going to start at time zero and integrate up to some arbitrary time t. Now I don't want to go into the details of doing this integration, but what we'll end up with is negative log of Vs minus Vc and this will be from zero up to Vc, and that's going to be equal to T over Rc, and that integration was from zero up to T. Now let's move this negative sign over to this side of the, side of the expression and update the equation. So we're going from zero to Vc, so we plug in log of Vs minus Vc, so that's putting this Vc in for that Vc. I know that's the same variable, but um, just for simplicity, we're using that same variable, minus log of Vs. And this is going to be equal to, well, we put, substitute in t there, we get t, we substitute in zero there, and we'll get zero. So we just end up with negative t over Rc. Uh, we can rewrite this because we have a log of something minus a log of something. You can go log of Vs minus Vc over Vs. Now, if we take the inverse log of both sides of that expression, the e to the log of this will just end up with what's inside the, what's inside the brackets there. And then we'll, on the other side, we'll get e to the negative t over rc. So we get, let me just draw a dividing line there. We get vs minus vc over vs equals e to the negative t over rc. Now, remember, we're trying to get an expression for vc and how the voltage across the capacitor changes over time. So with a little bit of algebra, we get Vs minus Vc equals Vs 
e to the negative t over rc, and then we will get dc equals vs minus vs e to the negative t over rc. And we can also rewrite that as so that's the voltage, that's the expression for voltage across the capacitor. We also want to know an expression for the voltage across the resistor, as well as the current through the circuit. So, going back to Kirchhoff's voltage law, Vr is Vs minus Vc. Then we can plug this part of the expression into the Vc there, and we end up with Vr is equal to Vs e to the negative t over Rc. So there's my expression for voltage across the resistor. And then current through the resistor, which is also the same as the current through the capacitor, well, that will be Vr over R. So we end up with Vs over R, e to the negative t over Rc. So those are my three expressions for the voltages for the resistor, for the capacitor, and then the currents through both of those devices. And in a second, I will plot out what those look like, so you can see exactly how they're changing over time. But let's just take a look at it intuitively and get a kind of intuitive sense of what's happening in the circuit over time. We're thinking over time, so at some point in time when we're calling that T0, that switch is going to close. Now two things to keep in mind. There's an instant right before the switch closes and an instant right after the switch closes, then they're going to behave entirely different. So we can call those two, they both happen at time zero, but we can call the instant before the switch closes T0 minus, and the moment immediately after the switch closes as T0 plus. So let's take a look at the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the resistor, and the current through the capacitor, which is equal to the current through the resistor, at a, at a few different time points. So at time T equals zero minus, so the instant before the switch closes, T equals zero plus, an instant right after the switch closes. And then what's happening over time, I don't mean over time, I mean over, over a period of time, what's happening with the voltage across and the current through those devices. And then finally, at the end when the capacitor is fully charged. Well, at the instant the switch closes, or the instant before the switch closes, we have an open circuit. So the voltage across the capacitor, the voltage across the resistor, and those currents will be zero. The instant the switch closes, the voltage across the capacitor is still zero. There hasn't been any time to put charges on it yet. Therefore, the voltage across the resistor has to be the full source voltage. And the current is going to be the voltage across the resistor divided by the resistance. Now, over time, the capacitor will be charging. So the voltage across it is going to be increasing. The voltage across the resistor has to be decreasing for Kirchhoff's voltage law to be true. And if the voltage across the resistor is decreasing, the current is also going to be decreasing. Now, when that capacitor is fully charged, the voltage across the capacitor will have equal, will equal the voltage from the source and therefore the voltage across the resistor will be zero, and the current through the circuit will be zero. So this table here is showing you at a couple of instances in, instance in time, at the beginning and at the end, of what's happening with the voltages and currents. But this graph here shows you what's happening over time for those voltages and currents. And you can see that the voltage across the resistor starts high, and then it decays in a way like this. And the same thing happens with the current because it's, it's just following the, the voltage of the resistor. But then the voltage across the capacitor starts charging quickly, and then over time it'll finally reach that, that maximum value. And what I challenge you to do is to use these equations that we've just derived here and figure out at different points in time what values you will have for the voltage in the capacitor, voltage in the resistor, and the current through the, those devices. And let's do that with a resistor value of one kilo ohm, a capacitor value of, let's say, 2.2 microfarads, and figure out at several different points in time what values you're gonna have for these voltages and currents. Now there is an alternative way to derive these equations using the definition for current and then using differential equations around charge, and you can check out the video for that right here. And if you wanna learn more about capacitors, you can check out the playlist here and pick and choose which videos you wanna watch with in terms of capacitors.
And if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. If you want to get more videos like this, be sure to hit subscribe. As always, thank you very much for watching. See you next time.